Hi, I'm Vanessa from My Little Wildling, and today I'm going to be doing a review video on Kinetics Tiles, which I have right here, and comparing them with a competitor brand, Picasso Tiles. First, just a little bit about magnetic tiles. There are magnets all around the edge, and they're all primarily plastic. There's one company that makes magnetic tiles called Earth Tiles and they are made with Baltic birch plywood. I would love to add Earth Tiles to our play shelf, however, they seem to always be sold out. So we ended up getting Kinetics Magnet Tiles. I did a bunch of research and the leading brands seem to be either Kinetics or Magnetiles. Magnetiles are the original magnetic tile. What is wonderful about these is that they offer a, a huge array of open-ended play for your, for your kids. My son's three years old and he's been playing with these almost daily. What I love in particular about the Kinetics is that you can see right here there's nothing really like obstructing the view through the tile, which means that when you're playing against a window or something that's refracting light, you're really not getting anything that's blocking that view. If you compare that with the Picasso tiles right here, you can see that they have this reinforcement inside, which does affect the light refraction and Picasso tiles as well as magnet tiles have this interior um, support. Kinetics claim to fame was that they have a unique beveled design which allows clear refractions so they are able to do that and the tiles are quite sturdy if I compare the two of them this one does in fact feel much sturdier, like the plastic is thicker, definitely, than this. They also, for kinetics, have these little riveted joints here, which means they're a little bit more of a secure tile. One of the complaints for Picasso, for instance, because they are just glued together, there aren't any rivets, is that if you do drop these tiles, some of them can break. So I don't know how often that happens, but it would be something as a parent that I would be concerned about because I don't want these small magnets going in my son's mouth. He just turned three in December and I'm just introducing these tiles to him now. I think that he could have had these earlier, but they do take some getting used to when you're playing with them. The magnets on these ones are particularly strong, so even the first couple times he's like asked me for help to pull them apart. Um, and they don't really magnetize that well on certain angles, so it takes it definitely takes some getting used to when you're playing with them. And then yeah, especially with the larger tiles, there you have to get them perfectly balanced to keep them in one place otherwise they're gonna fall so when you're trying to build structures you need probably like three of them to sort of stay in a more solid state for kinetics and a lot of the other brands they have the larger squares some of them have large building platforms they have smaller squares this is a right angle I'm gonna say this is an isosceles triangle and an equilateral triangle. So there's three different triangle shapes, a square. Um, this one came with two rectangles. This was the 100 piece set, a window, gate, and an open square. I will say that a 100 piece set is probably the number that you would want to start with. I've already noticed now having these for 
around two months that Cedar is already asking for more shapes. He wants more of these isosceles triangles. They don't make a complete circle with the amount that you are given in a 100 piece set. So you really are limited on the kinds of creations that you can make. This 100 piece set came with an inspiration book and Cedar will look through this and he'll say, oh, I wanna build like the Stegosaurus. Well, we don't have enough of the triangles to build the Stegosaurus. So that really limits your creative possibilities. If you wanna go with more tiles right off the get-go, I would highly suggest that. Kinetics has, a, I think it's 212 piece set. I would probably go with that knowing how much he likes these and how much he's already playing with them. And then if you wanted to go on the budget end, Picasso and Meg tiles are quite a bit cheaper. They're less than half the price. So you would be able to get a lot more tiles for the same price if you went with Picasso or Play Megs. In terms of I guess a variety of tiles. The Kinetics kind of has this color palette. They have a pastel palette, which would be really cool. They also have a different set of shapes, which is their geometric shapes. So I think that would be a cool set to add as well. And then they also have little car bases. All of the brands have car bases that you can get as add-ons. But I like just like open-ended creative possibility without having the, you know, the shapes and like, for instance, with Picasso, they have these open squares and then they have inserts with alphabets and stuff and pictures on them. I like the imaginative play that these open-ended toys offer and I feel for myself having something like a picture of something is going to limit his creative possibilities and he probably wouldn't use those you know alphabet tiles in the same building way i think it would be very distracting for him all the different brands that i mentioned they work together so you can have a set of kinetics and you can get a cheaper set of Picasso tiles or play mags, and then you can get the glow in the dark from Magna tiles and you can have all these different tiles and they all work together. So I think that's really cool to be able to do that. So as I mentioned, there's a ton of creative possibilities with these tiles. I really, after having them, I think that they will have a permanent place on Cedar's play shelf. He's playing with them, as I mentioned, like daily. There's all kinds of possibilities for learning and play. And like, I saw this really cool idea the other day where someone put a bunch of tape on the tiles. They set them up and they cut the lines where the tiles break up and then they had their own little puzzle for their child to do. So there's so many ways that your child can just use this on their own and there's so many creative ways that you as a parent can facilitate learning using these tiles so i really think that they are an essential toy to have on your child's play shelf and an essential tool to have particularly if you're going to be doing any homeschooling or anything like that i think these will come in really handy like i mentioned a hundred just doesn't seem to be enough. More is better. <laughs> so no matter what your budget is, if you really want a really high quality product, I would go with something like this. I love the clear tile. I love the, the way that the light shines through this. But if that's not in the budget, there are really good options that are available at a much lower cost. So the only downside that I think would obviously be, you know, that you have this bracing in the way, but also there's no rivets. So you might have to dispose of some tiles over time if you go with a cheaper option, but that could be worth it for you. So all in all, I would say essential toy for your toolkit, essential toy 
toy for creative play. I hope that this review was helpful for you. I hope that I've answered a lot of questions that you have and that you, you're able to kind of see how these toys work together and what you can do and just imagine the possibilities for play. I will link all of the products that I mentioned below. Check out our really comprehensive blog post on this where I kind of go into detail of more about each of these products. If you have different tiles than the ones that I've mentioned here, I would love to know what tiles you have and I would love to know what you like about them or don't like about them or recommendations that you have. If you have any really cool learning toys or developmental toys or wooden toys that you love in your house, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're using. I'd love to check them out. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.